I'm a sort of phony professor at Cornell, and until recently there was a wonderful social psychologist there called David Dunning. And David Dunning, um, with a student called uh, Kruger, uh, did a couple of, um, of psychological experiments, because he was always fascinated about how good people were at knowing how good they were at doing things, at what he called self-assessment. And um, what he discovered was that in order to know how good you are at doing something, requires almost exactly the same skills and abilities that it does to do that thing well in the first place. So there's a wonderful corollary to that, which is that if you're absolutely no good at something at all, you lack exactly the skills and abilities to need to, that you need in order to know that you are no good at it. <laughs> Now, I think this is very, very delicious. <laughs> and it explains a great deal. That's where we are at this point, and that's before we even come to the general problem of pure stupidity. <laughs> now, I, I, I think we all really quite like stupidity, you know? I think we have almost an affectionate relationship with stupidity, provided only that it, it does not affect us directly. We like stupid jokes, you know, the story, uh, the question, why do the Irish have all the potatoes and the Arabs all the oil? And the answer is because the Irish had first pick. <laughs> but it's a little, bit, a little bit different when you really have to deal with it. Um, and sometimes it doesn't matter, and it can be quite amusing. Like I was in a ho hotel in Miami uh, two weeks ago, and um, I left. I went down to the spa, and I left my shoes down there, and I got a phone call saying, could we bring your shoes up to your room? And I said, of course you can, thank you very much. And there was knock, knock, knock at the door, and I go to the door, and he gives me my shoes in a bag, and he says, here are your shoes, Mr. Cleese. And I say, thank you. And he says, could I have some identification? <laughs> now, he knows my room number, right? And he knows my name, but he wants some identification. So I go over, and I happen to have a copy of my autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> so I held it up by my face, and I said, you see, that's my face, and that... <laughs> John Cleese, that's my name. <laughs> and he said, I'm sorry, that's not good enough. <laughs> if you come in contact with real stupidity, <laughs> um, sort of serious stupidity, as I did when I was teaching, it, there's something quite alarming about it. I, I was at... Uh, between um, leaving school and going to, uh, to Cambridge, I went to um, teach at an old prep school I'd been to, and I was asked to teach English, history, and geography. I said to the headmaster, I don't know anything about those. I've done nothing but science for three years. And he said to me, this is absolutely true, he said, it doesn't matter, John, just stay a page ahead. They're 10-year-olds. <laughs> So I was teaching geography, and what I loved about teaching geography is they were little 10-year-olds and they were fun, is when I came into the classroom, they had to have their atlases open, and I would shout, China! And they had to put their fingers on China, and I would run around the room and rough them up if they hadn't got it right. And it was fun, and everyone giggled and had a good time. At the end of the term, I got outline maps of the world, and I asked them, uh, Ten very easy ones like Australia and Canada, and ten harder ones like Germany and Brazil, and then ten quite difficult ones like Bolivia and Cambodia. And there was one boy who'd been in the class the whole term who got one right, and the one he got right was Bolivia. <laughs> he, put, he put the British Isles in the middle of the South Pacific. Now, when something like that happens, you start thinking, what has been going on in his mind? <laughs> Was he just practicing circulating his blood? Or what, what, did, 
what did he think he was doing? And I remember showing it to the, the senior master there, a lovely man, an Oxford man, I'm delighted to say, called Geoffrey Thomas Bartlett. And he said, John, the trouble with stupidity is that you can do absolutely nothing about it. <laughs>